Hello and welcome for this video. I'm going to be making this corner shelf right here. As far as the shelf lengths are concerned, I used an online calculator called the Sagulator to figure out how far I could go. However, since the Sagulator uses two points of contact instead of one like I have here, I divided the number by half and deducted another 15% off of it. And the other is to use a more forgiving fastener if you don't have a child to worry about. So I hope you enjoy this build and look forward to seeing you again. Here I'm joining three 1x3s at 600 millimeter lengths and ensuring that they're nice and snug and at flat as can be on one side. And then taking a six inch scrap of one by three and cut it at a 45 degree angle and making sure that both sides are nice and even. So while the glue is drying up, I'm going to make this jig right here. And I'm just going to take a couple of these M5 nuts and put them in the trench of the T-track and place this right here. And that gets it just above the uh, T-track there. And take a speed square and just line it up with that. And take this 45 cut that I just made and put a bit of glue to set this. And then just let it dry there as is. And just for a little bit extra support, I'm going to put a bit of glue and put a piece of wood right there and clamp it on down. And now I'm just going to run it through the table saw a couple of times to clean up the edges. To make the grooves for the shelves, the blade is set at 90 degrees and 38 millimeters high. I first cut the front and then the side, and then flip the post over to cut the other front and side, and then repeat until the shelves snugly fit. So to avoid confusion, what I'm going to do is orient the shelves as they would be, and then use the adjustable square to take some measurements off of this. And these two shelves are going to have that mark placed right there. And for the second measurement, take the adjustable square and put it to the other direction. And then mark accordingly. Alright, so it's now time to complete the jig right here. And I got the nuts again at the base of the T-track. Put a small dab of glue just a about to the point where I think it's going to go. Place a couple of playing cards for the shelf post to go onto. And put a bit of glue on this. Right. Just slide this into position. And then see where I put the glue and just slide it on into place. And then just let it sit there until it all dries up. Since the corners of walls have caulking and paint in them, I'm going to have to round over the back corner here. So it's time to use the jig that I made up, and I got the blade set at 45 degrees all the way out. The jig in place, and I'm just going to place this with the rounded side up. And place it up against the fence, and what I want is the blade tip to where I can barely see it protruding past. Okay, so it's time to mark up where the keyhole fastening devices are going to go. And all I'm going to do is just have it in a drill press, put it against the edge right there, and then mark it by pushing down and doing the same again. And from there, I'm just going to mark from point to point, and then tape a piece of paper on here with some scotch tape. So I'm not sure if you can see it or not, but there is a faint pencil line that I can see through there. And what I'm going to do is just take this owl and mark on that line where I want to put the holes. And two on the other side. And now I'm just going to use a small drill bit so I can use it for centering later on. So just a quick explanation of the setup I got going on right here. I have an 18 millimeter Forstner bit and the depth stop is set a little bit deeper than the height of this fastener. So the hole right there is going to be at the top of the keyhole. So that means I'm going to have to dig out or drill out to the top bit and go down. And then once you have everything drilled out, just take one of your Otis Rustiest chisels at hand if you have one and straighten everything out. And just to do a test fit, I put the drill bit in there 
and what's going to happen is that should be able just to rest on top of the drill bit and it'll fit nice and snug in there. So now that I got the area cut out for the fastener, I just need to make a, a little bit more room for the screw head. Okay, and then refine that hole that I drilled prior, and then drop that straight down onto it, and then check my work to see if I can get this to go all the way to the top. Good. So it's time to put everything together and to keep your orientation right, just look at the mounting bracket. That way you know what the middle one's going to come out this way and the two others are going to come out this way. Put some wood glue on the shelves where it's going to made up, slide it on in. And to make sure that this stays where I want it to, I'm just using these squaring blocks right here. And then cover with some kind of finish. I'm using ton of oil of course. And then use that same piece of paper as before to mark your hose for drilling the walls.